Hello guys, welcome to Inside Electronics. So in today's episode, I'm going to show you guys something that I found in my attic. So these all belong to the attic series. And this thing, as you can already see, it's a 9-in-1 mantra chanter made by a company called Vibrations. Now, these things are much popular among the people of, among the Hindu people. You know, basically, it's all just the mantras that relates to all these goats. And what this thing does is it plugs into your AC main socket and when you turn this thing on, it just keeps on cycling a particular mantra that you selected using this but button right here. It has nine uh, mantras in this particular model. You will get this thing. You can still buy this thing, but this is really old. I think this thing is uh, from 2004 or 2005 because I remember using this back in those days, back in my school days. This thing is no longer working, so that's the reason why I am going to take this thing apart also this was just lying in my attic and it has nine goats uh, nine mantras related to all these goats I don't know whether the mantras relates to any of these goats at all it may or may not be the case but basically this thing works just by plugging it in turning the switch on you, you got three voice levels the low the medium and high that's all it does there is no like gradual or the analog type volume it's just low medium and high and this thing what this is a soft latch but because turning it off through this button will not do anything else rather than just turning the speaker off it will still consume power so you better if you have one of these you better turn the switch off and uh, let me see if I'm not having that I do have another one uh, that some look like this and I'm not seeing it here but I will find it I will show that in another video so enough of talking let's open it and this thing is actually really popular among the group of people among a lot of people you know basically they will turn it on during the evening and when they light up the lamp even in my home I remember using this during the evenings when we light the lamp and setting the volume to this to the low position will actually give a little bit of ambient you know a temple like ambience and that's what exactly this thing is used for it just to create some you know some divine vibe or divine ambience in your home yeah you get the point right and I forgot to mention that this thing is made by a company called vibrations and if you search on Amazon on eBay you can still buy these things now this exact model but you will get different models and these things are nowadays made by a lot of companies uh, they all look the same but the company branding will be different and you will get simple things like this and you will get a big you know a cd drive type things that has a lot of like 60 or more tones in it that has a huge the regular kind of speakers inside and i may get one of these and i will open that later on that on my videos so let's open this. It was held on place by two screws. You can already see the speaker hole. It uses the toy, toy cars, uh, you know, toy kind of speaker. Not a toy speaker, but and there it is. And you can see what is wrong with this thing also already. It is a standard 8 ohms 0.2 watts speaker. You can see that it's a 0.25 watt speaker, 8 ohms. Oops. And it's a cop chip. Basically, every single product that is like that, a voice based thing, has a cope chip inside because it's an all in one chip. It has the, and this chip is what controls the volume and everything. So it has the memory, it has the uh, uh, the voices built onto it, and has the controls, has the power amplifier built onto it. So all it needs is a power source, like that here. In this case, they are using a transformerless power supply or much pop commonly known as capacity rubber power supplies and that's already you can already see the damage and I have to mention that this thing is not damaged by the power surge that killed a lot of my other things this thing is damaged way back in the 2000s itself 2004 2005 itself and this thing was just lying in the attic till yesterday that I found it so to fix it it's going to be an easy fix if this is the only issue and I don't know whether that has caused any issues with the chip but it looks like there is nothing more than that let's, you know what let's take it out completely for 
otherwise I, I, I don't I don't think that is necessary because underneath you can already see that's only going to be there's a single resistor right there and three switches that's the only thing that is on the bottom side so it has some un unpopulated areas right here which I don't know what uh, could be that without a chip number or any identification there is no way you can tell what that does and let me see if I can okay let me do one thing if I'm going to fix this but not now but let me see if I can uh, find whether this thing is okay this if the chip circuit is okay then I will make another video showing how to repair this thing basically it's going to be just a replacement of these two parts but that is only the case if the chip works so what I'm going to do now I'm going to solder there's a center there okay this thing let me explain a bit about this one it uses the common capacitor dropper circuit followed by a bridge rectifier and this looks like the AC will first have to go to this low, low ohms resistor it's a fusible resistor and then it is going to the capacitor okay and finally it has a center diode for the proper voltage it looks like a one and I don't know it's whether that is a one and four seven one and four it's a four point seven volt center maybe because it's already the it is across the the power connection that is going to co chip is across that diode and that diode has a series system. so it has to be a center and it has to be a four point seven volts center so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder two parts directly to, across this capacitor that will try uh, and I will try to use an external power source to make this thing work and if it works you can I will demonstrate how the different options in this work and let's see so I will be back once I solder two wires to there so okay guys so I now have soldered two wires to these two points as the ground and the uh, positive supply and I'm using an 18650 cell and I'm going to power it on in front of the camera so let's see what happens so yes. oh. as you already heard that this thing works but something else is happening but I actually used uh, this thing to actually touch there and to turn it on and immediately I'm getting it's this thing is getting really hot I mean the wires are getting it's like the battery is like shorting out I don't know what is happening there but it is gone I think the entire circuit board is heating up maybe it is long gone guys I just killed it I'm guessing because this thing worked for a moment and now everything is dead it's really hot the corp seems to be okay the corp has seems okay but still I think I managed to kill it anyways I will, I'm going to pause again and I will be back with the final results so guys finally I managed to find out what is wrong with this thing initially I thought some my soldering is uh, shorting out somewhere but it is not that in fact the damage was not just happened to that point this resistor this is a green blue and red is a 5.6k resi ohms resistor that is a dead short that resistor is gone it's 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 a direct short circuit across it so that is the reason why it is creating that much heat on my battery in fact the battery i think is now dead because of and like the entire wire and this thing was hot and that is because these this resistor is the 5.6 ohm resistor is directly connected at the output pin to act as a temporary load because when this thing you know it needs a certain amount of uh, load at the end for it to actually provide some power to the circuit so this as this is acting as a dummy load normally but in this case this is a dead shot which when you power it up because this resistor is directly at the end point when you power this thing up you are actually shorting out your power supply through this that is the reason why I used instead of this battery I used a cell phone charger like this one that has an LED built on with this this is the reason this is situations the in these kind of situations is where you find 
these cheap chargers really useful because this has an LED built onto it. The moment I try to power this thing up from it, the, the LED actually turns off. That actually indicates a clear short circuit. But still, it find this thing managed to find some voltage, and that is why it played out at least some tune. So you cannot trust these things, but in situations like this, these cheap things will actually come to your hand. Really, that will save your day. So now, in my troubleshooting video, at least now I know that this thing works finally, and now I know what all things have to be taken care of. So I'm going to pause again. I'm going to uh, desolder that resistor, and I will be back, and I will play back all the melodies inside this. So, yeah. So okay, guys, I finally managed to unsolder one pin from there. Then now the short circuit is gone, but still. I found that this thing is really sensitive because right now I'm using the 5 volt power supply itself but I tried the lowest resistor that I could find in my resistance box. This is my component box. You know, as I mentioned, I'm on a limited budget. I'm not very high uh, lab, very equipped lab facility over here. I'm, I'm on a limited budget. So if anybody wants to support me, you can do so by a PayPal support. Right now I'm going to connect the power supply directly to it and I'm going to show you guys you see. So this is the first song. I'm going to reduce the volume. That's the lowest. That's high, mid and low. So now we'll change the tunes. So as you can see, sometimes it skips the track. See? That key has a debound, so sometimes it skips the track. But still, now the short since the short circuit is gone, it can now easily work with a 5 volt power supply. But still, I tried using the lowest resistance that I could found in this in series just to limit the current and this thing is not working. Give it direct 5 volt power supply and it works fine. I don't know why. But yeah, that is how your Divine Mantra Chanter works and I'm not going to repair it guys, I'm just going to use it in the 5 volt power supply because that's really a hassle, you know. Even with now, I'm really <laughs> fed up with this power supply so I'm just going to drill a hole and I'm going to use a DC 5 volt jack for it. So yeah, thanks for watching, see you in another video.